Okay, so today we will be building a complete gaming setup guys, not just the gaming PC, that to around like 40,000 rupees budget. And let me tell you, this is going to offer you like crazy good performance. Let's get started. Hey guys, this is Vimal here and welcome back to another video on my channel. So today's video is going to be very interesting as well as super useful for a lot of people. Thing is, we built a lot of gaming PCs budget edition ones from say 25,000 rupees to even 50,000 rupees on our channel. But a lot of you people were asking like, hey Vimal, can you do a budget PC setup, not just the gaming PC build, like a complete setup including the monitor price, peripherals price and all that and that to around like 40,000 rupees budget. So that is what I'll be doing exactly in this video guys. Thing is, building a gaming PC on a budget can be a bit tricky guys because see, gaming PCs require dedicated GPUs and when you add dedicated GPUs, the price of the PC goes like really high and you don't want that to happen. So over here, you actually have like two options. One is you can either go for secondhand components in the market, but thing is, not everybody gets the same kind of deal on the secondhand components, right? They keep varying. Uh, that's why I just removed this option from the list and the only option left for me was to use an APU. If you guys don't know, APU is like a CPU that comes with built-in GPU. You know, like those APUs from AMD, that is what I'll be using in this video, guys. So we will be building this gaming PC using an APU from AMD. And the APU that I'll be using is a Ryzen 3 3200G. And let me tell you, it offers like crazy good gaming performance. And you actually don't need to use a dedicated graphic card, especially, you know, when you're building on a budget. And that I'll show you in this video. So before I get started and show you all the components that I'll be using in this video, I want to give a shout out to TPS Tech. If you guys don't know, TPS Tech is an online computer store, guys, that sells a lot of computer parts like CPUs, motherboards, and peripherals, and a lot of other stuff. In fact, you can actually buy these components from their website. It's available on their website. I'll just leave a link to their website in the description box below. Go check it out there. All right, coming to the components, First thing, the CPU. As I've told you just now, I'm using an APU from AMD, the Ryzen 3 3200G. This is a 4-core, four 4-thread four APU that comes with built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics. See, this one has a base clock frequency of around 3.6 GHz and a max boost clock frequency up to 4 GHz. And let me tell you guys, it offers like crazy good gaming performance on a budget. You can play buttery smooth 720p gaming using this CPU. Uh, you can even do some 900p and 1080p gaming also, but by reducing the graphics to low settings, uh, I'll show you all these performance and you know detailed benchmarks at a later part in the video But this is what I'll be exactly using in this configuration And if you come to the motherboard here, I'm actually using a tough b450 motherboard from Asus See this motherboard costs around like 9,000 9,300 rupees something like that But if you don't have that a big budget you can actually go for b350 series also by going to 350, you can straight here only cut down the price like 3000 rupees. But instead, I would recommend you to go with B450 only because see, the build that I'm building in this video, right, is like a future upgradable kind of build. So just by replacing few components, you can like really upgrade this build to play 1080p gaming also. So if you're just tight on a budget, then only go for 350. Otherwise, I would recommend you to stick with this B450 series only. So yeah, this is a motherboard that I'll be using. And if you ask about the RAM, well, I would recommend you to use Corsair's Vengeance RAM, two 8GB sticks in, you know, dual RAM configuration. So that will get 16 gigs of total RAM for this configuration. So currently I don't have two of these Corsair Vengeance RAM sticks, guys. So what I'll do is as an alternative to their replacement, I'll be using two 8GB RAM sticks from HyperX. Well, that was about the RAM. If you ask about the power supply, uh, I'm using a 550 watt power supply for this build. You can actually settle down for a 450 watt power supply also in case if you're tight on a budget. But let me tell you, I've told you right, this is like a future upgradable build that I'm planning. That's why I'm going with a 550 watt power supply from Corsair. Uh, see guys, right now we are not using any graphic card in this build, but let me tell you, I'll be making a separate video on the same build where I'll be adding a graphic card to this and you know, show how much difference it brings when you add a graphic card to the same build. So this one is like a future upgradable model. Quite interesting. You, you have to check out the results also. Stay tuned for that. And that was about the power supply. And if you ask about the case, case is also from Corsair. The model I'm using is their Corsair 110R. It's a good case on 
a budget. And lastly, if you ask about the monitor and the peripherals, I'll cover them as well, but step by step. First, we'll build this gaming PC. I'll show you this PC. And after that, we'll talk about the peripherals and the monitor that I'll be using in this setup. So let's quickly get started with the assembly. All right, the first step you'll need to do is install this APU on the motherboard. See guys, as I mentioned before, APU is basically a CPU with an integrated GPU. Installing the CPU is very simple. You've got the AM4 socket on the B450, right? Just pull the lever like this to open up the socket. Now take the CPU and place it on top of the socket. But before doing that, always make sure to check and align the gold triangle on the CPU with the engraved triangle on the socket. Once you do that, gently drop the CPU over the socket. Now pull down the lever to lock the CPU in its place. And that's it guys, we're done with the first step. Now is the time to install the cooler. See, we're using a stock cooler only because we're a bit tight on the budget, right? So no need of using any dedicated air or liquid coolers. And this stock cooler already comes pre-applied with a layer of thermal paste on the bottom side. So you don't need to apply anything separately on the CPU. Just place it on top of the CPU and tighten up all the four screws on all the four corners. Go in a zigzag pattern and don't over tighten them. After you're done with this, you need to connect the cooler's 4-pin fan cable to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. Just like this. And we've successfully installed the cooler. Now moving on, next on the list is the RAM. As mentioned before, as an alternative, I'm using this HyperX Fury RAM, each of 8 GB, so that sums up to a total of 16 gigs of RAM for this configuration. Just open the RAM slot, check for the notch and the RAM direction, and push it gently until the lever locks itself. And that's it, we're done with the installation of the RAM. We're almost 50% done with the build, looks super easy, right? It's actually a lot of fun building a PC yourself, and let me tell you, you learn a lot from it as well. Now, before installing the motherboard in the case, don't forget to fix the I.O. shield. Okay, let's bring the motherboard now and put it in the case. So here it is, our new Tough B450. Align the motherboard such that all the screw holes on it match with the spacers of the cabinet. Now take some hardware installation screws that you get with the case and start fixing the board. As usual, go in a zigzag pattern and don't over tighten them. We're almost coming to an end. The only few things left are the power supply and the storage. Here's our Corsair's 550W power supply. Place it in the PSU compartment of the case and fix it to the cabinet using some screws at the back side. And that's it guys, we're done fixing all the components in the case. Now all that is left is to connect all the power supply cables. Let's start with the motherboard's 24-pin power cable. Now this is very essential, you need to connect this to the 24-pin socket present beside the RAM sticks. It goes only in one direction, so make sure to check that before connecting. Next is the 8-pin CPU cable. This socket is present to the top left of the board just above the CPU. So connect the 8-pin cable over here. Moving on, we need to connect the SATA cable from the SSD to your motherboard SATA ports. All these SATA ports are present on the lower right corner of the board. Just connect them starting from the port number 1. In case if you have more number of drives, just connect them serially in the next second and third ports. And all that is left is to connect the front panel I.O. cables like the HD audio to the left side and cables like for power, reset and hard disk LEDs. And that's it guys, your brand new PC has been completely assembled and is good to go. So let's quickly power it on and see how this thing looks like. Whoa guys, not bad right? Looks awesome for the price. Love the stealth black look the Corsair's case is offering. 110R is actually a pretty good PC case on a budget. And despite being a budget PC, we did manage to get a bit of RGB lighting as well on the inside and gives an attractive overall look. If you're wondering what fans I've used over here, well, they're very affordable fixed RGB lighting fans from Aerocool called the Cosmo 12. And each of them cost only around 350 rupees. So sit back, relax and have a look at these beautiful shots of our brand new budget build. Guys, remember I've told you that this is a complete gaming setup with the peripherals? Well, here you go. These are the peripherals I'll be using for the PC. The monitor you can go for this setup is this 22-inch Full HD 1080p IPS monitor from LG. The model is 22MP68VQ, costs only around 6000 rupees in India. 
and is great for the price. If you ask about the peripherals, the mouse I am using here is Redgear's X2 Pro RGB with adjustable DPI up to 4000, costs only 799 rupees. And you can check out their gaming keyboard collection as well, priced around 1500 to 1800 rupees. So this is a setup that we'll be using for today. Now before we jump into the performance section, let's quickly boot into the BIOS and tweak some settings to bring out the best performance out of the Ryzen 3200G. So here's how the BIOS on the Tough B450 looks like. The layout might be a bit different depending on the motherboard brand and the model, so keep that in mind. Okay, first head over to the AI tweaker. Here you need to set the XMP profile for your RAM, so that it can run at the max clock frequency. In the AI overclock tuner, just select DOCP and select the max clock frequency available. In my case, it's 3466 MHz. So that'll sort out the RAM. Next, we need to tweak the APU's VRAM section, which you can easily do by changing the UMF frame buffer size. By default, this option is set to auto. You need to change it from auto to 2 or 3 GB. I would recommend you not going about this as I felt 2 or 3 GB was quite stable and greatly improved the graphic performance. Setting it beyond this might limit your usable RAM capacity for the other Windows applications, so keep that in mind. After that, just apply these settings and exit from the BIOS. Now let's finally jump into the gaming and check out the results. Let's first start with GTA 5. See guys, we are playing all these games at 720p resolution. Now that's because this is an affordable budget build, right? Running on integrated Vega 8 graphics. If you want to play in 1080p resolution, then in future you can even add a dedicated GPU to the same build and greatly improve your gaming performance. Alright, let's see how it performs. Holy smokes, are you guys looking at those frame rates? We were easily getting an average frame rate of around 90 to 100 FPS. That is crazy for this build. I know it's only 720p resolution, but trust me, this is really good because we are not using any dedicated graphic card in this build. Radeon Vega 8 is doing a pretty good job. Buttery smooth gaming experience. You can easily play most of the AAA title games at 720p resolution with great results on this build. Just check out this gameplay. Not only 720p, I even played GTA 5 at 1080p resolution with the graphics set to normal and got around 50 frames per second, which is not bad at all. Okay, let's also play Doom Eternal and see the result. We're playing this game also at 720p resolution with the graphics set to ultra. Let's see how it goes. Not bad guys, that is actually good. It's a AAA title game and on an average we were getting around like 45 frames per second in ultra graphic settings. Reduce the graphics a bit down and you can easily hit a solid 60 FPS. Well that's it for today, time to wrap it up. So let me quickly summarize all the component prices for you. AMD's Ryzen 3 3200G costs 7700 rupees in India. The Tough B450 board from Asus costs 9300. Corsair's Vengeance 16 GB RAM kit is available for only 6000 rupees and a 550 odd power supply from Corsair costs around 3350 rupees. The 110 r Corsair case is available for 3700 and lastly any 240 GB SSD is priced around 2500 rupees. So the budget of just the PC build comes down to 32,550 rupees. If you add up all the extra peripherals and the monitor from LG, the whole cost of this setup comes down to 40,850 rupees. Well, that's it for today. That was my video on a complete gaming PC setup. You can build around 40,000 rupees. I hope you all really enjoyed the video and got to learn a lot. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more such awesome videos. And I'll see you all in my next one.